Someone's knocking at the door Someone's knocking at the door Can you hear him knocking? Can you hear him knocking? Amen and amen. I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this afternoon again for your life, for my life, and for all that our good Lord, amen, has been able to do for us. Uh, there is a passage which says, this is the day that the Lord has made and that we should rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what is happening in your life, no matter what is going on, if you and I can focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, it is going to be okay. And I'm so glad that you tuned in this afternoon. If you have a friend out there, a family member, invite them. Uh, to listen to VMI. Again, this is Pastor Sam coming to you live from TV33, Vigilant Ministries International. Amen. You can um, uh, download this. You can watch us on the web by going to www.tv33 or whpr.com. You can watch uh, us on any of your gadgets amen uh god is good and he is good all the time um we have our annual uh event coming up um something i may probably have to do a better at it <laughs> in the near future um we have what i call uh vigilant ministries international annual summit and uh, this year's uh, event is scheduled f uh, f from July 26, 27 and the 28th, the weekend of July. And um, if you are born again believer, I want to ask you to do something with me um, uh, as we uh, go into the event. I want us to fast and pray uh, for this event, uh, we schedule our fast to start uh, from the 15th of this month. It's just going to be seven days prayer and fasting, okay, from the 15th all the way through the 22nd of July. Uh, I want you to stand in prayer uh, with me as we go into the uh, weekend of July, 26, 27, and the 28th. Uh, the commencement day is going to be the 26th, on, uh, and we're going to open it up on, uh, we'll start from uh, 6 p.m. on that 26th. Uh, we have a very dynamic uh, speaker coming up uh, to speak. And then after that, we're going to grace the weekend with prayer. We're going to pray uh, that evening for maybe one and a half hours after the word uh, uh, is delivered and then uh, uh, we'll leave and then come back in the afternoon I mean in the morning uh, the Saturday this year's Saturday is dedicated for women and I have a tremendous women uh, they'll be coming uh, they'll be holding workshops and all kinds of good things they'll be speaking on marriage um, there's a lady who'll be speaking on finance uh, so invite your friends friends of your friends your colleagues and uh, uh, come over, come support. Um, we don't have a registration um, a form to go with this event for this year. Uh, come anyway, but when you come, come with love offering, okay? The location is going to be 14400 uh, Puritan Avenue. Uh, there's a church 
the call uh, Strathmore Church, all right? Uh, 14400 uh, Puritan Avenue. And um, all the weekend uh, event will be taking place right there. And I hope you'll be in prayer with me as a member of the body of Christ. Stand in prayer for the things of God. Let's go into a quick prayer before I bring to you what the Lord has uh, placed on my heart for us this afternoon. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you again this moment, this afternoon. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your everlasting mercy. Lord, may I be an instrument of blessing through which you disseminate your word this afternoon. Give each and every individual a heart of receptivity, a mind to comprehend. Lord, may your word go forth today with clarity, power, and anointing. I commit every equipment that is projecting my voice this afternoon into your hands. I cover the studio, the entire equipment, all the engineers, every individual that find him or herself, or as part of this program, I cover them with the blood of Jesus this afternoon, Father. Oh, as your word says, do we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they are mighty pulling down every stronghold demolishing every lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought captive under the obedience of jesus christ who oh, stand in that power of the blood the power and the anointing of the holy spirit and hold every every atmospheric spirit that is in contrary to the holy spirit right now in check in the name of jesus oh satan the diabolos and your co-host your influence wouldn't have any impact over the people of god Lord, may the Holy Spirit have your way in the mind, in the hearts of your people this very moment, O oh Lord. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit, O oh Father, have its way this moment. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, O oh Lord. Speak to us, O oh Father. Oh, bring a word, O oh Father. May that word, a rhema word, O oh Father, oh, have its impact on our lives today. May you bring restoration into that home today. May you bring deliverance into that family today. May you bring Bring reconciliation, Father, into that family today. Oh, Lord, may as your word go forward today, each and every individual that is believing you for something, oh, Lord, because there is power in your word. There is deliverance in your word. There is restoration in your word. May that have its place in our lives today. I give glory unto your name. And this I pray this moment with thanksgiving in Jesus' matchless name. Amen and amen. As I was thinking about coming on air this afternoon, there is a passage that just dropped down in my spirit. And that is found in Mark chapter 8, verse 36. Mark 8:36 This is Jesus speaking. Is it for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? 37 says, or what will a man give in exchange? For his soul. I want to come to you this afternoon with what I have entitled The World or Your Soul. The World or Your Soul. 
Jesus said, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Twice Jesus mentioned soul in this passage. What is soul? Is that vital principle disposition of yourself that which make you real you that vital principle disposition which would incorporate your intellect your emotion and your will is a decision making base of you as an individual and here Christ is saying what would you give it an exchange for that when we talk about the world the cosmos the world the universe as you and I know it today what is Jesus referring to here uh, this passage here um, could mean also that there is a probability that you could have everything that the world could offer. Everything in terms of material possession, financial wealth, all that money could and can buy at your disposal. And Christ is saying, are you willing to hold on to that which diminishes, that which is temporal? There is nothing wrong with wealth. There is nothing absolutely wrong with a human, an individual, having all these things at his or her disposal. But what do you do with it? So for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. That animate principle, vital disposition of the real you. The seat of your decision making, your intelligence, your will, your emotion, uh, where you get your character, your conduct from Jesus said what are you willing to trade that in for this also speaks to the fact that uh, here and now in this body um, has a time to expire amen this body here the one that is housing this pastor Sam Henry this one has a way of living. This is made out of clay. The real you, your soul, that's going to live on in this afternoon as God is speaking to you through me. So what are you willing to give it an exchange? For that, you know, in the world you and I live in today, the world full of technology, I can only think about the Bezos and the Zuckerbergs and the um, Byron Wolfords and the Bill Gates and even the Trumps and the Rockefellers, those who have 
attain a certain level of wealth. Today, um, the technology, look, the, the founders of these companies like Facebook, Instagram, Amazon, and all this. Um, Facebook, for instance, um, Zuckerberg has the ability and the capability of hiring the most qualified software engineer who would have the capabilities of putting together an algorithm that will write a program to instruct internal operating system regarding the binary code which will regulate what speech he wants on the platform. So as he hired these sophisticated software engineers and as they write their programs to regulate or to give a command uh, uh, in, in a form of algorithm and uh, in a binary code as to uh, what they should do. So when you, you can go on any of these platforms and as they have their programs written, they have the ability to control who sees what you say, how you say it. They have the ability to silence you. But again, what about if one of these individuals, I'm using any of these wealthiest amount as just as an example, because it is not only the wealth, the wealthy, that has the propensity or, or has uh, uh, the ability or, 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 or has what it takes for him to be driven overboard in order for him to lose his soul. Uh, you don't have to have all of these at your disposal and still lose your soul because pride can also get in. But I'm using these wealthy individuals as an example for our learning. Amen? So these wealthy folks can be, they have everything on their fingertip because with their money, they can buy, they can build the entire state. I believe so. With the kind of money they have, they can buy, they can build an entire city. So they they have uh, the world at their command. So people like maybe Zuckerberg or yeah or Bill Gates can choose not to believe in God, and he can say because he doesn't need God. He has all the money in the world. He can buy what he wants to buy when he wants them and how he wants it delivered to him. So he can choose to say no to God and can even say God does not exist. And the Bible is saying, for what will it profit a man, if he gains the whole world, everything that you and I see, you can see, touch, feel, and everything tangible, so what a man is willing to give in an, in an exchange for his own soul. Are you willing to do that? Do you want to gamble? Listen to what Christ says in Luke. Uh, before I read from Luke chapter 12, anybody that find him or herself in this category uh, with wealth, he's in charge of a tremendous wealth, has the propensity, has 
the has a way of saying, you know what? I don't need your so-called God. I don't need him. He can even look down on us. He can be condescending to those who believe in God. And say, because you have nothing, that is why you believe in your so-called God. But listen to what, and forgotten that this life is a brief moment. So in Luke chapter 12, Jesus says something very profound. He said, then he spoke a parable to them saying, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my bands and build greater, and then I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? Verse 21 says, So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Six times the I word, the self possessive noun, was used in this passage from Luke chapter 12 all the way through verse 16 through the verse, the 21st verse. Six times the I word, I, 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 has been used, meaning this individual has no God consciousness he's filled with self egotistic character this is what is verse uh, mark chapter 8 verse 6 is all about for what will it profit a man if you are egocentric all you think about is you, yourself, and just you without God. This is what is going for you. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Here we see in Luke chapter 12, here was a rich man who seems to have everything going on for him. So he said to himself, the Bible says in verse 17, he thought within himself, not giving God the credit. God is in no picture at all. God has nowhere. He's forgotten that everything that he owes comes from God, the creator of the universe, the sustainer of all things. The one who spoke the universe into existence and hold all things by the power of his very word. This man here, since he has everything within or everything at his disposal, he has no regard for God. So the Bible says he thought within himself, forgotten that. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. So to you this afternoon, 
as I have this few minutes left, my question to you is, do you know that time spent here is momentarily have you made a provision for your soul? Are you prepared to meet your maker? Are you ready to meet God in a person of Jesus Christ? He said, I should ask your question this afternoon. What will you give in exchange for your soul? Are you ready for him? It is appointed unto a man once to die. After that, judgment. Your political ideology, or whatever it is, has no bearing on God. Do not let anything, whatever you involve yourself in, drive you away from God. Whatever you do, give credit to God. Whatever you do, remember that you were created by God. You were formed, fearfully formed by him. If you have had an opportunity to listen to me for these few minutes, I want to pray with you. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the moment. If you are not received him, this is the moment. Because salvation is not found in anybody but in Christ. Not in Muhammad. Not in yourself. Not in Confucius. Not in Buddha. Not in anything. Not in your material possessions. Salvation is found only in Jesus Christ. I want to lead you in prayer. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I confess my sins. Come into my heart. I believe you died and rose again for me. I thank you. If you just said that prayer, you are born again. Look for a church. Come fellowship with us. And see what God does with your material possession. Serve the Lord with your material possession. God bless you. May God continue to be your guide, your master, your Lord, and your provider. Till we meet again, be vigilant. Someone's knocking at the door Someone's knocking at the door Can you hear him knocking? Can you hear him knocking?